So, as we said, it's time now to crunch the COVID-19 figures in South Africa. The numbers have increased and uh, we get more insight on the changing patterns of this virus and do what do we do with this? We're joined by Dr. Ridwan Suleiman, who's Senior Researcher at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, Dr. Suleiman, let's just start with the number of positive cases we've been seeing an increase in the average daily case, cases of people who test positive take us through that and what exactly do they mean yes that's correct so over the we've, we've seen a continuous increase in the daily number of cases and in the last week this has also increased even more significantly um, two days ago, we recorded our highest um, number of COVID-19 cases reported in a 24-hour period of close to 6,600. Um, what this means is, in general, all of our COVID-19 curves are still on the increase. And the graph that you, that you see at the moment shows the daily seven-day ro rolling average of COVID-19 cases, and that's represented by the height of the bars. Mm. And also indicated on this graph by the color of the bars is the, the positivity rate or the number of tests that are conducted that, that yield a positive result. Um, so you've got a, a lot of information portrayed on this particular graph. By the height of the bars, you can see that the numbers are increasing and they are going up even more so um, over the last week or so. Mm. What we want are shorter bars um, to, to, um, for, for it to level off and then to, to go down. I was just looking at the average in terms of COVID-19 worldwide. We're almost at the 10 uh, million mark. But if you look at the rate of deaths, that's at 4.6% globally. So what about our average of death rates within that seven-day period? Yes, that's correct. So, so our deaths are also still increasing, but... The good news is that in South Africa, the mortality rate has remained below 2%. We're currently looking at a case fatality rate of 1.9%, mm -hmm. which is much lower than the global average, and that is good news for South Africa. Okay, so let's go from the daily death rate then. And has it doubled just in the past period that we've been seeing the increase? Yeah, so one can look at... Um, at this particular graph which shows the doubling rates and the doubling rate is a measure of how uh, how quickly a quantity doubles in this case we're looking at the the case numbers um, what you can see is that since level three lockdown the last bit of the curve the numbers are doubling every 13 days that means that from 13 days ago um, up to now our case numbers have doubled what we do want here are higher, higher number of days, which would correlate with a flattened curve, because a lower number of days means a shorter time frame, which also means a steeper curve and a faster rate of growth. Mm. So currently we're looking at a doubling rate of every 13 days of cases. So is it concerning that just as fast as the number of cases are doubling, we're also seeing a, a, a doubling uh, caseload in terms of the deaths as well? Um, yes, I think it, it is concerning because... Um, although there is a lag between the, the deaths and the, the time from, from being diagnosed, we're looking at a doubling rate of deaths of between 14 to 15 days. So that's very similar to the doubling rate of cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about the hospital, trans hospital admissions. What do they reflect? Um, so if one looks at the trend in current hospital numbers as shown by this uh, graph on screen, um, this is taken from the NICD's um, Sentinel Hospital Surveillance Report. It gives an indication of, of hospital admissions across the country, um, and it's broken up into those admitted, those in ICU, and those ventilated. Um, like the other curves, we're seeing a 
continuous increase in hospitalizations as well, um, which shows that there's a bigger strain um, on, on the resources and the capacity within the hospitals. Um, and it doesn't look like we quite reached um, the uh, peak as yet. So a, a continuous strain on, on the hospital capacity shown here. Just from what you've observed with these figures, and I'll stay with the hospital admissions, has there been a major strain on our own health systems as a result of this? We know that the Western Cape, for instance, set up a super hospital facility at uh, the Cape Town Convention Centre, and uh, that was also fitted out with uh, the latest and best of technology to help uh, fight this. There were various donations made of uh, ventilators, but as in, is it keeping pace, the increase of admissions and the health systems? Um, I haven't quite keen, been keeping track of the actual capacity of the hospitals, but I, having following the numbers and the reports, as you say, the Western Cape has been under significant pressure. Um, what one can't see from this particular graph is that obviously the um, the capacity varies between provinces. So Western Cape is under strain at the moment. Um, and from reports that I've heard, I believe that, that the admissions in Gauteng are increasing as well, um, as well as Eastern Cape. So those two provinces are following the same path that Western Cape has been on um, over the last few weeks. Okay, so now let's examine the cumulative cases for each province. We've just spoken about the Western Cape earlier on. Um, we, we spoke with a public health expert who was saying Gauteng and the Eastern Cape are also um, you know, following suit, they're hot on the heels of the Western Cape, but she did say their curve seems to be flattening. But I want us to start with the cumulative cases first of the provinces. Yes. Um, so we know that Western Cape has been ahead of the, of the curve, basically, and it has been the epicenter within South Africa. And this can be sh seen by um, the light blue line at the top. As you mentioned, that this curve is showing a, um, a slight leveling off. It, it may be a bit too soon. Um, take note that this is a log scale. So what we are interested in is the, the gradients of these curves to, to understand the rates. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. One caveat, though, in terms of Western Cape is that they did change that. They did report the change in testing strategy and only testing um, those over 55 and those in healthcare facilities. So the case numbers specifically in the Western Cape um, can't be used as a sole indication of whether um, that province is peaking yet. Um, nevertheless, we are seeing a slight slowdown in, in the growth rate within Western Cape. What we see is the Eastern Cape uh, has been uh, rising quite significantly over the last couple of weeks. And of late, Northwest and in particular Gauteng has been on rapid um, um, rising cases, as you see from the steep increases from those curves. Mm, I'm still going to say mm. the cumulative cases for each province uh, before we look at Gauteng. There's this whole controversy which we know has been very much highlighted by U.S. President uh, Donald Trump on the issue of testing and its role in not only combating the infection rate but efficacy in understanding the, the trends. Does it mean more testing obviously equals more cases because you are able to detect those positive cases? Just in simple layman's terms here. Um, I mean, yes, more testing would result in more cases if you've got a high transmission rate. Um, but w if one wants to have this epidemic under control, one needs to have significant testing to ensure that you have a full understanding of, of how um, the virus is being transmitted. Um, and you can't just, just simply stop testing and say, look, the case numbers are, are dropping because um, that wouldn't be the reality on the ground. That would reflect then in terms of the hospital admission numbers, the death numbers, those would continue, continue to increase. Um, the, the 
global um, indication is that if you drop below a 10% positivity rate, um, you're not really testing um, widely enough to, to have the virus under control, and that should signal a red flag. So one wants to test enough to ensure that you have a low positivity rate, or in other words, a high number of, of tests per positive case return. Okay, so I want us now then to look at the doubling rate of cases in Gauteng. Explain that to us. It's quite interesting because at some point it seemed that Gauteng would overtake the Western Cape as becoming the epicenter, but somehow the Western Cape then became the epicenter and uh, accounted for more than half of positive cases. But we're seeing uh, this uh, steep rise, there, according to your graph, at every eight days, this is what we've seen. Mm-hmm. That's correct. So, so Kauteng initially, before the state of disaster and lockdown as well was initiated, cases were increasing very quickly. They were doubling um, at a rate of two days, every two days. Um, this was due to imported cases uh, mostly. And after lockdown, we saw a um, quite a significant flattening of the curve, both nationally, but in particular in the province of Kauteng. You can see uh, that the doubling rate dropped down to 25 days, which is really good. We saw uh, quite a, um, uh, a, a good leveling off of the curve. Um, at this point, this is where Western Cape picked up and became the epicenter of the curve um, of the virus. Hmm. However, as you can see from this graph, since um, level three lockdown, cases in Gauteng are increasing and increasing rapidly. I mean, cases were expected to increase. Um, I think everyone expected that. But what is quite um, um, striking in this particular graph is that case numbers are doubling every eight days currently in Gauteng. Hmm. And uh, Dr. Suman, I want to talk about, uh, so we're going to look at the next graph, which is cumulative debt totals for each province. But when we talk about cumulative scientifically, what are we talking about here? And what is the significance of this graph that we're going to put up now so that people understand? And if we can also just go down to um, I know the breakdown that is often given to us is that of age in terms of uh, the deaths. There, are, there were 2,340 deaths as of yesterday. And if you look at the 0 to 9 age group, there's been 0.1% of deaths. And the most we've seen has been in the 60 to 69, which is obviously as per the warnings that we're given previously. So what do we mean here when we talk about the cumulative deaths per province? How should we be reading this particular graph? Yeah, so the cumulative death is basically just a uh, sum of, of, the de- of the daily deaths continuously over time. Um, so this particular graph just looks at the total deaths within each province plotted over time. Um, it's also shown on a log scale here so that one can, can compare the, the growth rate um, because these graphs are also growing exponentially, particularly the top mm. four provinces. Um, So one just looks at the gradient of these to compare the growth rate of of death rates. Um, It doesn't, um, this particular, um, these numbers don't break down in terms of the age groups. Um, As you say, um, there there is um, more deaths within the the older age groups. Mm. Um, What that does show is that Western Cape's death numbers have been most um, severe, um, and have increased at the highest rate. Um, as you indicated at the beginning of, of, of the show, that the Western Cape, has this curve is starting to show a slight uh, decrease. So it may be a bit early to say, but Western Cape might be, might be starting to peak. Mm-hmm. Um, one other thing that's significant from this graph is Kauteng and KwaZulu-Natal's death numbers have remained quite low. Um, and I'm not too sure what the, the reasons for this, and I don't know if anyone has actually been able to, to, to say why that is the case, but, but within those provinces, the case fatality rate is currently below 1%. Um, with that being said, it must be mentioned that the different provinces will be peaking at different times. So um, 
I, I think one just needs to bear that in mind. And I'm glad you say that because looking at the Northern Cape, so far it's had one death, um, Pumalanga has had two. And if we look at the cumulative case for the, the total country, South Africa, the daily uh, testing as well, I'm going to ask us to look at those two graphs. Uh, let's start with the cumulative case total for South Africa, and then we'll move on to the daily coronavirus testing numbers. Uh, what, what should we read into where we are as a phase at the moment? Yeah, so um, this graph shows that South Africa's COVID-19 numbers have continued to increase. Um, Again, this is a log scale. What, we sh what we're um, seeing on this graph is the total case numbers, then the total um, recoveries in green, then the total deaths in red, and the active cases, which is the total cases minus recoveries minus deaths in, in blue. Um, what you can see is that the, the, the case numbers fall onto a... Um, collapse onto an almost linear line on a log scale, which indicates that there is still exponential growth within the case numbers. Um, and the, the recoveries have been maintained above 50% for the last couple of weeks. So, so that's a good, um, a good measure to, to say, look, the recoveries are increasing and we now over 50% of cases have recovered. Um, which, which is quite positive. Okay, so now we look at the daily coronavirus testing numbers. We, we spoke about the importance of testing and screening, but you did mention earlier on that the Western Cape has also uh, done things differently at some point. Is there a lesson to be learned for other provinces there? Well, I think one needs to i think we we need to try and learn as much as possible from where from the western cape because um purely western cape has has been um ahead of the curve and, and peaking before the other provinces um and so i think the other provinces um it seems like they are following suit so we need to try and learn as much as possible in terms of the testing um this is dependent on the resources and the capacity that's available. Ideally, you want to just test as much as possible if you do have the resources and you want to ensure that you have a low um, positivity rate. So that means that the cases that you're finding are a true reflection of, of the actual reality. What we saw, see in this particular graph is over the last couple of weeks, it, we seem to be leveling off in terms of the number of tests that can be conducted within South Africa every day. And that number was sort of leveling off at around 30,000 tests per day. Over the last couple of days, it has increased with, with the private test facilities uh, putting through a few more tests. So that on average has, has pushed up to about 32 to 34,000 tests per day. That being said, the, the testing rate has not kept up with the growth rate of cases. And so um, I, I guess this is probably due to, to testing kit shortages and, and other resource um, constraints. Um, right. Ideally, we want that to continue to increase. Dr. Suleiman, thank you so much for your time and uh, breaking it down for us, helping us uh, understand. I know uh, quite a bit of it is academic and it's very difficult for us uh, to keep to the rules, keep ourselves safe while uh, also trying to, you know, get as much as possible from the daily figures and data that we've been given. Thank you so much, Dr. Redwan Suleiman is a senior researcher at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research.